Welcome back to my channel. I know, I know, I told you that I would have reviewed the DJI Pocket 2, but a new firmware got released on January 5th and it adds a lot of stuff. So basically I need to start from scratch and rebuild my review <laughs> from the beginning. So this delayed uh, the release of my review on the, on the Pocket 2. So today we're going to talk about something different and that something different is travel tripods. Now, I know it's not super exciting. Uh, we get excited a, a, a lot about gear, but not for tripod and I'm not excited as well. But chances are we need one, at least one. There's people that have few of them. I, I have two or three. So we need those and we need to know what to buy. Now, speaking of travel tripods, if you look in to Google, you search in YouTube, Amazon, whatever, You, if, if you just type um, travel tripod, you're gonna find an incredible amount of options from the cheaper, super cheap plasticky stuff that won't even hold a mobile phone to the Gorilla Pod to tripods that are so big and heavy that they have travel in their name, but the only travel you would do with them would be tossing them out of the window and see where they get to. Uh, so let me explain you what I mean with travel tripod. To me, a travel tripod is a tripod that is compact and lightweight enough to be easily carried around, whether it's in a backpack, in a bag or wherever, without compromising too much uh, my uh, photographic um, ideas and at the same time by giving me the uh, insurance that I will not drop my my expensive gear and to me a tripod like this perfectly matches what I was telling you so this is the Sirui A1205 which as you can see that's my hand. It's not even big as as big as two of my palms. And this tripod gets sold together with a with a ball hand, which is part of the package. So you don't have to worry about buying a, a head on its own. All of that uh, is made on purpose to ensure you have the smallest and uh, lightweight. Um, overall package uh, for your for your gear uh, as I said uh, the travel uh, the travel is called Sirui A1205 and the head is called A11 and again it's a ball head now let's go uh, so before we go into the um, specifics of this uh, travel tripod uh, let me know that I've used this for months with my gear, which is usually a Fuji X-T3 with the 16 to 80, but I've used it with the 15.5 to 200. I will use it with the 70 to 300 whenever that gets out. And I wouldn't be scared about using it with the 100 to 400. Uh, so when I talk about my gear, that's what I need my tripod to hold, my travel tripod to hold. Uh, without letting me uh, be scared about dropping everything. Talking about construction of this tripod, this is a carbon fiber tripod. This helps keeping the weight on the low end. And speaking of weight, the, the tripod weighs only 1.2 kilograms, which is 2.2 pounds, I guess. And um, even if the, in the Siri uh, webpage, they, they say it's a one kilo uh, tripod. If you go down, they tell you that it's 1.2. I would assume that the one kilo is referring to the tripod itself and uh, 1.2 is together with the head, but they sell them together and you, you need a head. So basically it's a 1.2 kilos tripod, which is fine. A, a nice tripod that weighs only 1.2 kilos is fine. The maximum payload is 10 kilograms, 22 pounds. And be aware of that, like 
every manufacturer Siri overestimated. I would never put 10 kilos over this, but we'll talk about it later. Um, when it's folded like this in its most uh, compact position, it is only its length is 37 centimeters. But the tripod can extend when it's fully extended to uh, 153 centimeters, so 1.5 meters. Even though the website, I don't know why, don't ask me, uh, says that it only get to uh, 140 centimeters, 139 centimeters. When I saw that number, I had to check for myself because I remember it was higher and it is actually higher. Don't ask me why they say something like that in their website. It's one, uh, it's 153 centimeters to the top of the plate. Um, and then this with the camera on top of it basically makes me super easy to look into the viewfinder of my camera. I'm uh, 185 centimeters more so. Um, I'm a normal height. I'm tall, but not too tall, and it's fine for me. I don't have to bend. I need to bend a little bit to get to the camera level, but for a travel tripod, this is already a great achievement. It basically doesn't uh, limit me in my choices when it comes to, to photography. We'll talk about it later. Uh, speaking of construction, uh, its minimum height from the ground when you're shooting it's 25 centimeters so it goes decently low it doesn't go too low uh, but it's decently low so again it's useful and as the majority of the tripod it's got a hook over here in the center column that allows you to add weight uh, to further stabilize the tripod and Unlike many of the tripods, this has a leg, of course. I never get the right leg first, I don't know why. <laughs> Anyways, you unscrew a leg, and this leg together with the, I'm not doing it now, but together with the center column becomes a monopod. I didn't, I did never use it, and I don't care too much. But it's good for you to know that you have this option if you need to. Another thing to mention is, the mechanism to lock and unlock the tripod is a twist lock. So you twist to lock or to unlock the, the, all the legs. Now, this is something you may like or not. We will discuss it later. Uh, but the majority of the travel tripod, the way I, I intend them, uh, are like this. So I kind of had no choice but um, swallow it. And I'll tell you later if I like it or not. Let's just say that clear and loud. This is a photographic tripod. It's not a video tripod at all. It doesn't have a fluid movement and it doesn't have anything that helps you with, with uh, video. So it's a photographic tripod. Nonetheless, it's a great photographic tripod, especially when it comes to travel photography. Because um, I've used this thing for months now. It was in the summer. I bought it in the summer. And I've been using it for single days uh, hikings, uh, multiple days trekkings, travel, and basically for pretty much everything I do uh, with my ph ph photography outside. That's because it's uh, tall enough, sturdy enough, and comfortable enough and at the same time super portable that I can carry it everywhere without saying oh my god I need to take that huge thing out and start fiddling with it. No, it's super easy, it's super um, uh, intuitive to do, it's like it's super easy to use. I really liked my experience with this tripod so far. There's few things that uh, could, be, could have been different Let's just say the ball head, as I said, doesn't have a, a, a dampen mechanism. This would have helped, but I get it. It may, um, it may have impacted the overall uh, size and weight of the, of the package. And at the same time, one thing that may scare you if you try it uh, in a real store is that when you lose in the legs, and you move it around, you hear, and you see it wobbles a lot. But the moment 
stuff it's uh, pretty tightened it's not a problem anymore so don't get yourself a wrong impression when you do something like that the first time you try it. the first time I did it I was oh my god really especially because this tripod comes at the price because it's not cheap it's a 250 euros uh, travel tripod now is it cheap is it expensive your mileage may vary in this because there's tripods that are worth a thousand dollar euros uh, tripods that are worth 30 euros to me that's kind of a sweet spot for my uh, my gear uh, because I feel safe I don't feel like I'm gonna drop uh, my tripod and at the same time it's uh, lightweight and small enough for me to be able to carry it around with no problems of course the twist lock mechanism has its drawback because while with the clamp mechanism the old school uh, clamp mechanism you have visual insurance that when it's closed it's locked it's not going to move around uh, and when it's open it's opened with this, you, you will never see at the first glance whether the, 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 uh, the legs are secured or not. So you're running the risk of... Uh, that you may have forgotten to tie, properly tighten one of the sections and you see the trouble that is slowly going down or you forgot to uh, secure it at, at all. In that case, the trouble goes down pretty uh, easily. But to be honest, I only had that almost that experience four or five times in general and it never bugged me too much because it was slowly sinking and I could easily uh, catch it and fix it. And by the way, what I always do, I always move it around whenever I place my camera, I always move, move it around to make sure that everything is sturdy and I'm not laying on a false uh, ground with something void on the inside so at the end of the day it's not a big problem and actually it's super easy to lock and unlock with a twist like this in a matter of a second you you in a couple of seconds you unlocked all of the sections super easy to set up super easy to put it back so I ended up even even if I was concerned about the twist lock mechanism I ended up liking it more than than the clamp one again your mileage may vary uh, and i would understand uh, you preferring another mechanism to be fair as i said not many travel tripod have the clamp mechanism i guess this twist lock helps saving uh, space as i said before it's a 10 kilogram payload on paper i'll never Consider that as a 10 uh, kilograms pay payload. All of the manufacturers overestimated. So don't just. If you have 10 kilograms worth of gear, which is probably a long telephoto lens and a huge camera, don't look at this. This is not for you. You need something a lot bigger than that. So everybody who's looking at something like that will never have 10 kilograms worth of stuff. To put on the to put on the tribe and so uh, they shouldn't sell it for 10 kilos but for your normal stuff mirrorless uh, you hardly get over three kilos and you would be able to use it with a three kilograms payload without any risk at all uh, and even more than that so no problem with that now Speaking of payload and speaking of sturdiness, I've been using this tripod, as I said, for a lot of time now. And I found, I found myself at a high altitude, like 2,800 meters above sea level, with a windy day. And I could shoot uh, minutes long exposures, and even at night, minutes long exposure. And I've never, never had a problem with this tripod. It never failed me once. Whenever I had a uh, motion blur, it was because I hit the tripod or I forgot to use the two second timer. In, in that case, yeah, you're hitting the camera and the camera is gonna move. But 
When I do things right, the tripod has never failed me once. And this is a lot to say about a tripod. It's what you need from a tripod. And that's why I like it. So, to sum it up, in conclusion, this tripod has a lot going for it. It's sturdy, it's compact, it's lightweight, it's reliable. It never failed me once, so I feel safe with it. On the other hand, it's not cheap. I get it. But again, we spend all thousands of years of worth of um, equipment. In. Do you want to really place it over a super cheap uh, tripod? I would not. And I was in the bandwagon as well. I was buying cheap stuff and I always regret buying cheap for something like that. So yeah, it's not cheap, but it's not even super expensive. Like the, 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 the Peak Design tripod, which is kind of the same size, comes at more than double the price. So is it so expensive? Uh, another thing that could be done different was the dampening of the ball head. And again, I get it could add some weight and size. So I understand why they probably didn't do it. And one other thing that I forgot to mention is that the legs come with this plastic uh, rubbery, not plastic, rubbery um, uh, foot. I wouldn't have complained at all if they found a way like a twisting to uh, get it in and out to have like spurs that would allow you to be uh, using this a little more safely, like on ice or very slippery surfaces. But again, it's not a big deal. I've never found myself uh, needing those since I've been using it. So it would be a, a further peace of mind to have those. But even if we don't, it's not a big deal. So in conclusion, I would highly recommend this a uh, little travel tripod to any photographer that is lasting after a small and lightweight tripod to carry over pretty much everywhere with no problems. This goes uh, in an airplane whenever we're going to be able to take <laughs> a flight. This goes if it's a backpack, if it's a hiking backpack, if it's pretty much everywhere and it doesn't weigh nothing. So to me, is a really, really, really recommended piece of gear that I will probably never sell. Never say never, but I'm super comfortable with it and I really loved it. I guess you can tell. I think I said it like a gazillion amount of times. And what else? Nothing. If you stick to this channel so far, to this video so far, thank you. I will ask you to subscribe to see more of my contents. Uh, activate the, re the, the, the bell and leave me a thumbs up if you like the video. Leave me a thumbs down, if, if, thumbs down if you didn't. And tell me why you didn't like it. Because this helped growing me, uh, growing myself. Because understanding what doesn't work is the only way to improve. So let me know what you think about the video, about the tripod. What is your tripod that you normally use? Uh, and if you have other suggestions, because there's... Thousands of tripods around. It's everyone has its own choice, but it's nice to discuss. As I always say, I'd like to create a community, so feel free to comment down below. So thank you again, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.